On TV was at the scene of a single vehicle collision on Great Northern Road at Northern. While details are few, the passenger does not seem to be injured. Traffic continued to flow, though congested. A pickup truck appeared to have lost control and hit a utility pole. PUC crews were dispatched to the area. Less than a year after freezing driver and vehicle fees in Ontario, the Progressive Conservative government is considering raising them again while bracing for a negative reaction. In a proposal quietly posted to a regulatory registry for public comment, the government says it is seeking to introduce annual fee increases of 2% across the board for various driver, vehicle, and carrier products and services. The posting was up for just five days and removed on Monday. Only two comments were received, the ministry said. The fee increases would start July 1st and continue for five years under that proposal. The proposal said also that there will be a neutral to negative reaction from drivers, vehicle owners, and commercial carriers, with the impact on drivers and vehicle owners estimated to be low as proposed increases are minimal and will be spread over a five-year planning horizon. The government froze some driver fees last August, cancelling increases that had been set for the following month, leaving the fee for a new driver's license, for example, at $90 instead of $97. A rally to support the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion briefly became heated when an anti-pipeline protester began blasting loud music. Supporters say they want the pipeline project built to create jobs and boost Canada's economy. Project Reconciliation is an Indigenous-led uh, uh, group that wants to buy 51% of the Trans Mountain Pipeline. We're looking at uh, you know, the idea of uh, an all-inclusive process of building, bridging three provinces together, Saskatchewan, Alberta and British Columbia, where there's 300 and uh, some odd bands that we want to look at having a, 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 a coalition and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a partnership amongst ourselves to create you know, uh, economic opportunities by owning uh, the PMX. We're not asking for a handout. We're asking for you know a business relationship where First Nations, you know, can uh, be managing uh, you know one of the major major uh, resources in this country, of, which is oil and gas, to make sure that it gets to the market. That we're we're a part of creating jobs. That we're a part of you know creating a better quality of life for all of our families. A report released yesterday by the Insurance Bureau of Canada says that the federal government could help mitigate the cost of flood damage by creating a high-risk insurance pool to help lift the burden off the public purse. The high-risk scheme is one of three options laid out in the report, a product of months of work by a national working group co-chaired by the Bureau and Public Safety Canada. About one-fifth of homes in Canada are considered to be at risk of overland flooding, but many don't have coverage for the damage. For those that do, insurance payouts have surged to about $1 billion per year over the past six years, based on estimates in the report. Meanwhile, federal payouts to help communities recover from flood damage have quadrupled over the last four decades to about $3.7 billion during the first four years of this decade, compared with just $300 million during the 1970s. The three options laid out in the report include a pure market approach where risk is solely borne by homeowners, another where the government is more involved, and finally, the creation of a high-risk pool of funds to help manage the financial risk. The report suggested the high-risk scheme fares better than others at being affordable for homeowners, efficient at payouts, and accessible to homeowners. But the report stops short of making a recommendation on which option the country should follow. Democrats don't care about Russia. They only care about their own political power. They went after my family, my business, my finances, my employees, almost everyone that I've ever known or worked with. But they are really going after you. That's what it's all about. U.S. President Donald Trump kicked off his re-election campaign in Florida with a grievance-filled rally that attacked the press, 
the political establishment, and Robert Mueller's special counsel investigation into Russian election interference. For the last two and a half years, we have been under siege. And with the Mueller report, we won. And now they want a do-over. They want a do-over. Let's do it again. Didn't work out too well. Let's do it again. They want a do-over. We went through the greatest witch hunt in political history. The only collusion was committed by the Democrats, the fake news media, and their operatives, and the people who funded the phony dossier, crooked Hillary Clinton, and the DNC.